Hello, everybody. Welcome to this week's uh, SEDS Online webinar. Um, as I think everybody's aware, these webinars are brought to you through a very kind sponsorship from the IAS, who allow us to bring you these webinars and do all the other things that SEDS Online is able to offer. Uh, this week, we have uh, Christian Betzler with us, and Christian is going to be giving us a fantastic talk that I am very much looking forward to. Um, Christian is a brief introduction for those of you that haven't met him. Uh, he did his PhD at the University of Tübingen, uh, looking at uh, the Paleocene, Middle Maya, Eocene of the Rio Sangre, uh, so that's in the South Pyrenees. He then did his habilitation, uh, habilitation I, I can never say that word, at the University of Frankfurt. Um, he is now at the University of Hamburg. He is the scientific head of the German research fleet. He is an associate editor of sedimentology, the journal Sedimentology. And he, I'm sure you've read many, many of his papers. So I'm absolutely delighted to hand the floor to Christian. Please, Christian, take it away. Thanks, Stephen, for the nice introduction. And thanks to ERS for all this effort to put this wonderful seminar together and this webinar. That's a real great, great thing. But I hope that we can soon meet in person again at the meeting huh? and have a, a beer or a chat in person. So what I would like to, to, uh, to present you today are some of the results of, the, of our research we performed during the, the last year, which is related to the interaction of of ocean currents and carbonate platform uh, growth. And first of all, some thanks for the funding agency. So we, we have been funded by the DFG, the, the German Science Foundation. We have been funded by the Ministry of, um, of Education and Research, the BMBF, and also for, uh, by IODP and, and ODP. Um, so, some takeaway messages first. Uh, what I would like to show you today is, is how ocean currents shape the flanks of carbonate platforms by redistributing of the off-bank transported material, but also by eroding the platform uh, slopes. And this current control produces some specific stacking patterns of platform flank deposits which reflects the combination of current and gravitational uh, processes. And last, I will show you some uh, new results from the last years, where we show that the current system can contribute to, a, to the drowning of a carbonate platform. So what you do see here on this slide is, is a very simplified, uh, view map view of the main ocean surface uh, currents you very nicely see this circumequatorial belt here of trade wind driven uh, surface uh, currents in the tropics and you see that uh, current speed here in this circum uh, equatorial belt is the highest and if you look at the position of major isolated carbon platforms you see that these major isolated carbonate platforms are well within the path of these currents. And what I do show here with this little wide rectangles are the platforms we have been analyzing during the last year, reaching from the, from the Indian Ocean over the South China Sea to the Bahamas here in the, in the Atlantic um, Ocean. And what we will do during this talk is we will first look at large scale geometries at the seismic scales of these current and platform growth interaction. We will take some looks at the facies controlled by these currents, and we will go into the stratigraphic stacking uh, patterns. And finally, we will look at the drowning of uh, such a platform uh, system. And the focus here, the focus is really only on isolated carbonate platforms. So let's start with a large scale uh, geometry. So the, the interaction of, of, of currents and, and carbonate platforms has been observed since many years already. Here you see one of the first publications uh, from Barco Gardner et al from uh, the year 2004, which really nicely show, shows this, this round carbonate built up here to the right hand side then we see this kind of mode system in here and the drifts here on the left-hand side. 
so platform mode and drift deposits. At the time being, the interpretation was that this drowned carbonate platform in here acted, acted as an as a obstacle uh, accelerating, uh, accelerating this current. So that the platform drowned and after the drowning, it was an obstacle uh, accelerating currents around the platform. What I, what I would like to, to show you today is, is that this, the, 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 this is the, the existence of a drowned platform and the, the current acceleration on the platform is not a consecutive uh, kind of story, but that these two processes can coexist. So there are some very nice new data nowadays based on 3D uh, seismic uh, uh, analysis of the same area of Shaw Sarawak in the uh, southern uh, China, southern uh, South China Sea, where we very nicely see these isolated build-ups, these isolated platforms separated by these inter-platform seaways, and in these seaways we can trace, we can trace the direction of the currents flowing in here, and we see that the flanks of the platforms we have this extended mode sitting in here, and that we have see, this huge drift deposits sitting in here. The, the lower part of the slide shows some 2D sections where we nicely see this drift, these drift bodies and these current controlled modes here on the side. Um, another very nice example of the coexistence, coexistence of, of such a current system um, and a carbon platform growth is the Marion Plateau in Northeast Australia here, a publication by Alex Eisen uh, in 2001. Um, so you really nicely see again this uh, drift and mode uh, geometry. You see the platform here to the left hand side. And the interesting thing in, in here is that you have uh, several uh, ODP uh, wells and cores in here which allow uh, precise dating of these uh, current platform interaction. And you see that the age of the sequence boundary uh, tracing the onset of these currents is in here between 10 and 11 or 12 million of years. So, so this, this age assignment will, will repeat in other areas. Um, from the uh, western, northwestern uh, coast of Australia, the same uh, relationship between uh, platform growth and currents has been published, uh, published some years ago. And here you see, again, some 3D seismic images. We see the platform shape here on the left-hand side, where you can really see how the, how the platform or the currents shape the, the, the form of this uh, platform. And then here on the right-hand side, we have this, this high of the platform and we see that we have these bed forms attesting for the current flow in between the platform and in between the individual platforms. And here on the uh, right-hand side down here, we see a a cross section again, where you see such a drowned carbon platform body, the onlapping drift deposits and the modes sitting in here. Another example, which also illustrates that currents can can uh, currents which develop through time can can shape the the platform at a certain point and, and produce the different geometries is here from the Maldives. What you do see here. Is, is the multi-beam imagery of the seafloor. The water depths are shown here, so 530 meters, 760 meters. So it's it's like a it's like a view into the past. We we see this this uh, drowned barrier reef sitting in here. We know that these steps are drowned barrier reefs because we have taken samples in there, and we know these are shallow water deposits. So what we do have here are large benthic uh, forums, so these myogypsinoides or lepidocycline are sitting in here, and we have a huge amount of our coral debris sitting here. So this was a shallow uh, water carbonate factory, and at a certain time, this barrier reef uh, stopped to grow, and we have this current, uh, this current control teardrop shaped at all sitting here on the seafloor. So the interpretation of this was that here you have a rather, that here you had a rather sluggish current system, the barrier reefs developed, and then you had this high speed currents developing and, and shaping these teardrop shaped platforms. You can, we can see that nowadays the seafloor also very, very deep in the water depths of 500 meters is still affected. Uh, by bottom currents as shown by these uh, submarine dunes in here. And the unconformity which separates um, 
these current control from the non-current control deposits here can be traced into into the into the platform interior and has been dated and conformity is uh, approximately 13 million years old. Um, here uh, a seismic line through another part of the Maldives where you see um, this drowning and conformity again. So that's this high amplitude reflection in here. So that's the Miocene carbonate platform sitting down here. That's the recent uh, reef growth here, recent atolls growing here on the left hand side. And then if we go into what is called the inner seed or the basin of the Maldives, we see this drift mode and platform geometry again. And here, that's a, that's a case where really the platform growth and, uh, and the current, uh, current activity coexist. Last not least, um, going to the Bahamas, Gregor showed uh, in, in his talk some, some weeks ago, already showed many data of here, but here of the Bahamas, uh, the Great Bahama Bank on the leeward flank where we all have all these uh, wells which allow a very good uh, dating of uh, this succession. We really nicely see the same, the same uh, arrangement again. So we have this platform, the shallow, uh, the shallow platform with the flat top, the, the platform edge, and we have the, uh, the platform slope here. And then in the basin, we have these modes and these drift deposits further out in the channel. So what we did, uh, we did uh, during one of these cruises, we analyzed this two of slope uh, drift interaction in, in, a, in a little bit more uh, detail. And what you do see here is a merged image. So the upper part of the image is the water column. So these are ADCP, acoustic, acoustic Doppler uh, uh, profile or data, which show you the direction of the current movement. So the scale is down here. So these greenish colors in here, these greenish colors indicate that you have a southward directed current. These reddish, these hot colors in here show that you have a northward directed current. So a very interesting situation because in the same channel on one hand side, on the, on the eastern side, on the, excuse me, on the western side, you have the southward flowing current, which is the two of slope of key salt bank down here with a huge mode developing in here. So an erosional feature developing down here. Then you have this mounted and, and confined drift sitting here in the middle. And then here on the right hand side where the northward currents are, uh, northward flowing currents are developing, you have uh, the other erosional uh, mode in here. So uh, what we did, uh, what we did is to look at these uh, drift deposits in a little bit in a higher, in higher resolution. And that's a multi-channel uh, seismic line of this area where we very nicely see the, the belly of this drift, the modes to the right-hand side and left-hand side. And by looking at the geometries in time, we can see, first of all, that the drift deposition started some 12 million years ago. Again, the same time frame as the drifts we've seen, we've seen uh, before. And then uh, by tracing the, the paleo modes in here, we can see how the velocity of these currents um, are increased or decreased uh, through uh, time. Um, so I think that there are some very distinctive large scale geometric, uh, geometric features which really allow to to show this relationship between uh, carbon platform growth and, and drift deposition. For the people working in outcrop, it's, it's somewhat difficult a little bit to, 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 to trace such uh, geometries because they are really at a seismic scale. So we are looking at, a, at a thousands of meters kilometric scales in here. So in outcrop, it may be difficult to really see such uh, geometries. But there, the facies, next point of my talk, the facies may be, the facies determination may be helpful. Um, if we go back uh, to the Santa Rain Strait and, and uh, the Great Bahama Bank sit, uh, located here on the right hand side, what you do see here is, is the acoustic backscatter imagery of the seafloor. The acoustic backscatter imagery traces. Um, the, 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 the sound reflection properties of the seafloor. Um, the, the, these light colors in here mean that you have a very uh, lithified or coarse-grained coarse -grained, seafloor. 
so a high reflection potential. And these darker areas in here are uh, representative of finer grained uh, deposits. So what you really nicely see here is that you have these discrete lobes coming in here from Great Bahama Bank. So these are the lobes from the sediment export. And then you have this, what is called these comet marks in here in the deeper channel. These comet marks are, are scours and the erosions and winnowing due to the bottom current reworking, the bottom current acting here at the seafloor. So you have the, the, you, the, the off-bank export and the bottom current reworking meet here at the two of uh, slope. The blocks here, the, these are fall blocks from the as transport complexes coming down from the from the platform, but these are also blocks populated by cold water uh, reefs uh, nowadays. Um, so um, here another image because we, we also did some uh, some sampling in here just to so, show the grain size evolution, the platform export coming. So the Great Barber Bank would be uh, out of the image to the top of the image. You see the cyclic step, the platform export in here, and the contour currents acting here in the in the slope and the grain size evolution here on the left hand side, and you see that grain size is increasing downslope. So the so what you would expect in, in a purely gravitational setting that grain sizes are finding downslope, but here downslope you get coarser grain deposits due to this can do to this uh, current winnowing. And at the time we came up with this, what we call the peri-platform drift, where we showed how these currents interact with the uh, platform export. And um, one has to say that such peri-platform drifts probably um, best develop on leeward, uh, leeward slopes of current platforms where you have the, the, the sediment uh, transported through wind and waves on the platform top and then dumped here over the platform edge. Um, if, we, if we go on the other, on the conjugate margin of, of the Santa Rain channel and, and look at Key Soil Bank, um, the data, the data which, which I show in here, uh, the situation is a little bit different. So what you do see here is the bathymetry we measured at the time being. So the water depth here is from the 300 to approximately 500 uh, meters. So here that's the shallow part. So that's the GEPCO data included in here. So, so the ship cannot go in sh into shallow parts. So we did not measure in here. Um, here to the right hand side, you see the Straits of Florida. So Florida would be, would be on the uh, right uh, edge of the of the of the slide, and what we do see here is this platform coming from the Straits of Florida and turning around the edge of uh, Santa Rain uh, of the Key Sol Bank into the Santa Rain Channel. So this is the southward flowing current I showed you I showed you before in the ADCP data, and we have the this uh, this current acting in here on one hand side, and then we also see that we have. Again, a platform export. So we have these gullies in here, with a, which serve as a conduit for for material coming down in here. And again, we have the cyclic steps sitting in here. So in a map view, this uh, looks uh, like this. So on the left hand side, we have the bathymetric map. In the middle part, we have the slope angles. So hot colors are slopes with uh, with uh, angles higher than uh, ten degrees. And here, here again, on the right hand side, we have the Backscatter, uh, the backscatter uh, imagery. Um, so, what what you can really nicely see in the bathymetric map is this: you can really see how this current flows around here the the platform edge, and then here it oversteepens it oversteepens the slope where it really impinges on the on the platform slope. It's oversteepening through erosion, and. On the right hand side, the backscatter imagery, you really nicely see that we have this uh, kind of, of submerged part in here of Key Sol Bank where the currents flow with a great, uh, great velocity. So we have this winnowing, winnowing in here and then the final grain deposits in here. And the lower part of the figure is interesting because here you can see that, that sometimes there are grain flows coming down here. So you see this lobe shape, little, uh, little white bodies in here. So that's the grain flows coming down, down from the platform and interacting with this contour current in this area. And a closer look, uh, a closer look at this uh, stone is shown in here. So again, the bathymetry to the left-hand side where we see that we have these uh, gullies which form 
uh, be, which form in here, which begin to form in an area where these blocks, these blocks are, are fallen, uh, um, uh, fallen uh, reef blocks from the shallow water, but also low stand uh, reefs sitting in here. And, and in between these blocks, you see these gullies, which serve as a transport path for the material down, uh, the, down the slope. And here on the right-hand side, interestingly enough, you see that the gullies are infilled by fine grained material, whereas the shoulders are characterized by coarser grained material. And uh, this uh, section C in here, uh, located here to the left, the section C shows the uh, cross section through this gully and ridge system. And if you look carefully, you can see that the gullies and the ridges are moving, the axes are moving. So you see here, for example, the ridge moved from left to right during its evolution. Here, this ridge uh, moved from left to right, which in this case is from north, northwest to south, southeast. What we do see here for sure is the interaction of the off-platform transport and the lateral transport of material um, um, through the um, through the contour uh, currents. Here we see this uh, we see uh, uh, this green line as a sequence boundary. So we can, to a certain degree, by jump correlations with ODP sites nearby, we can we have an idea about the, the ages of these. Um, of these deposits and the green line is the sequence boundary, high frequency sequence boundary, which developed during the last uh, glacial low stand. So Marco Wunsch at the time came up with these uh, ideas and these um, and these uh, uh, models. So we are now on the on the on the windward flank of a platform. So the trade winds blow from right to left in here. We have a little bit of sediment removed in here, and by downwelling transported down the slope through these block fields and then contour currents take up and, and, uh, and deviate the main transport uh, path and uh, the section, uh, the corresponding section shown down here, the sequence boundary S, which was uh, color coded in green in the slide before showing in here. And the interesting thing is that here, the sediment export is relatively uh, important during the falling sea level stages. So that's a difference to the leeward flank uh, of the Red Bahama Bank where, where we have this uh, um, high stand export here. We also have a certain export during the falling uh, sea level. So the last slide from Key Salt Bank, because I think it's, it's a real nice, nice seafloor imagery. That's, uh, that's the southern, southern part of Key Salt Bank. So the shallow part of Key Salt would be here, would be here where, where it's black on the left-hand side. And we really nicely see um, how we can imagine how this current flows around the edge again and erodes and winnows material down here around uh, these uh, blocks. Again, these blocks are parts of mass transport uh, complex, but we also know through a sampling that um, on, on some of these blocks, we have a uh, cold water coral mound sitting in here. And, and here the cross section in the, in the, in the power sound, the single channel seismic line, the, the location of this cross section is shown by this white line. And here we really nicely see these blocks and mounds with these scours on the upcurrent side, upcurrent side of these blocks at the drift sediment, drift sediments sitting down here on the downcurrent side of the blocks. Okay. Let's go to see some uh, stratigraphic um, stacking patterns. So mm, in the past, if somebody goes into seismic stratigraphy and, and stacking patterns of, of uh, stratigraphic sequences in, in carbonate platforms, especially in, in tropical carbonate platforms, you, you, you come in with, with this dipstick idea that, that these carbonate platforms and the geometries of these carbonate platforms are really tracing position of sea level. And that's an example in here that's from the Maldives where we had this seismic line that, that's an old uh, line uh, by Shell, uh, acquired by Shell and the corresponding interpretation where we had the interpretation was that we have a kind of backstepping carbonate margin. So the, from one to four, it was a backstepping margin. Then we had this blue line, which was interpreted as a maximum flooding surface. And then we had this progradational complex here with these red lines shown in here. And the, if, if, if you go into, into the, the classical concept of, of, of such uh, of, uh, 
for the interpretation of such geometries, this has been interpreted as a forced regression. So at a sea level lowering, which was attributed to the middle Miocene at the time being. But we know nowadays that this interpretation is wrong, is erroneous, because what we do see here, so these uh, higher resolution seismic lines and then uh, some of the IODP wells, which we drilled down here. So what we do see here in these lines is that we have drawn platforms. This is absolutely right. We have a drowning unconformity sitting on top of it, but on top of the drowning unconformity, you don't have a prograding system due, due to a sea level low send, but you have a, a sequence of drift deposits sitting in here. So you have a current control deposit sitting on top of here. Um, this becomes obvious if, if you look a little bit at the 3D geometries um, of these uh, bodies. So uh, we, we did not perform 3D seismics, but the, the, the grid was, was so that we can we could reconstruct the, some surfaces, some uh, surfaces in the in the in the, uh, in the, in the seismic uh, of the seismic uh, volume. Here you see the the ODP sites uh, drilled at the time being, and then we can see that at uh, the, with this sequence boundary, which is uh, the turnover from the from the platform to the drift deposits, that we have these channels cross-cutting the platform here over here, there, there is a big channel here to the right-hand side, a smaller channel here to the left-hand side. And then you see these lobe-shaped bodies at the, at the opening where, where these channels open here into this uh, basinal area. And this is even uh, nicer documented if you, if you go in thickness map. So there, that's a two-way travel time thickness map. So it's not a real thickness map, but you really nicely show you see these two depot centers in here, one depot center here to the left-hand side, the other depot center here to the right-hand side. And yes, the deposits thin out towards the basin, but they are also thin out laterally. So this is not a forced regression. It's just a, what we call a delta drift sitting at the mouth of uh, two uh, channels. Um, another phenomenon which is uh, often related to um, on uh, two sea level variations uh, in covenant platforms are backstepping two of slopes. Um, and one, one example in here, the single channel seismics, high resolution seismics again from the Great Bahama Bank. So we have seen this before. So we have the bottom current flowing in here in the, in the, in the Santa Rain uh, channel. We have the sediment export through these uh, cyclic steps coming down here. And if you look, at the geometry of these two of slope deposits is that you have a backstepping of these slopes in time. And this backstepping of slopes in time here is usually what is attributed to a, uh, to a sea level uh, rise um, um, in carbon platform depositional systems. Same situation if you go um, into the Maldives, we measured several seismic lines cross-cutting some atolls and the basin. So we have this line one, two, and three position showing in here. So this would be line one, two, and uh, three. And as shown before, there are these currents flowing in here. So we have these uh, atolls and reefs growing in here. And again, at every two of slope, we have the backstepping margins. And these backstepping margins are just, are just a result of the erosion of these currents here at the two of slope. So now let's let's go to the to the last um, to the last part of, of the talk. Just a short um, short excursion to some recent data we acquired, uh, which treats the drowning of carbonate platforms. So the area of interest is located in the Indian Ocean again. You see a very simplified map of the Indian Ocean in here. So uh, on the left-hand side, you have the, the African continent. You have Madagascar down here. The Maldives Chagos uh, ridge sitting in here. And then between the Seychelles and the Reunion Island, you have the Mascarene Plateau. And what is interesting in this Mascarene Plateau, which consists of Saya de Mala Bank in the northern part and uh, Nazareth Bank in the southern part, is that you don't have these blue dots in here. These blue dots are everywhere in the Indian Ocean, and these blue dots are shallow water reefs. So this Mascarene Plateau, the Sayanimala Bank, is totally devoid of shallow water reefs. And the shallowest, uh, the shallowest area of this bank is in the water depths of eight meters. What you also see on this, on, on, on this map 
um, are the very simplified current pattern. These are the white arrows in here for the upper part here um, in the Maldives. It's a simplified view because, uh, as you may know, there are these reversing monsoonal currents here in this part. So you see the arrows going to the left and then right. So these are seasonal changes. But here, the Mascarene Plateau, the central part, is well within the area of the South Equatorial current flowing uh, flowing in here. And these reddish colors, that's the sea surface elevation, uh, that's remote sensing data. So uh, where, 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 where the color is red, so you have a, a sea surface elevation 0.791 uh, meters above the, the uh, normal uh, sea level. And these are the areas where you have the highest current speed in the ocean today. And uh, what we nicely see is that this higher demand bank is really impinged and, and afflicted, uh, affected by these high current speeds here in, at its southern tip. So uh, this was an interesting uh, thing for us to look at because we wanted to know what's the reason that we have this uh, reef gap in the central part of the Indian Oceans. We are well within the tropic, the surface water temperatures. Temperatures are okay. And the first idea was, oh yeah, we have some upwelling and we have nutrient injections in here, which may are, which may be part of these um, uh, drowning of these uh, platforms. So the platform nowadays is an elevated rim in here. It's, it's a horseshoe shaped uh, rim opening to the south and the shallowest area here is a so-called poidonot shoal area and it's lying eight meters below, um, below uh, sea level. So we have several seismic lines and several sediment stations sitting in here. So with these dots and here on the, on the right hand side down here, you that's just a very simplified cross section uh, through the Saya de Mala bank. So you have the Indian Ocean with water depths of several thousands of meters to the east, the west, and the shallow part of this platform here in the center part. Um, so uh, what, what was done first is a very simplified uh, mapping of the facies in here. So we just differentiated uh, five different uh, uh, facies. So we have kind of, uh, kind of coral and, and rhodalga deposits on paleo highs where you don't have a lot of sediment import. Um, and um, in, in, the, in this kind of perched basin in here in the open basin, you have some, some sands for Florinifera and Theropod uh, mud sands. And then the, this tipple line in here gives you the position of this lower section here, this section C in here, uh, which is oriented northeast, southwest. So from the inner platform uh, to the southern area where the south equatorial current flows. And what we really nice, very nicely see is that here along this cross section, we have a kind of distally steepened ramp and then where the current speed is highest, we just have uh, we just have hard ground. So we have areas of non-deposition. Just a few a few uh, seafloor images of this area. So we have this coralgal uh, facies, these mesophotic reefs sitting in the water depths of thirty meters here. A seafloor image showing uh, shown the, the living corals, which are really beautiful and healthy, uh, with rhodolites in between. And here you have is very nice Halimida uh, meadow sitting in here. Then if we go into deeper water depths, we have this kind of rhodolite phases in water depths of 45 to 100 meters. Um, so these rhodolites, this is really, I, I was surprised to see the images. We see that the rhodolites are arranged here in ripples. So in the ripple troughs, we have these rhodolites and then we have this rhodolite free patches in here. That's because you have bioturbation by fishes and so on, removing uh, these rhodolites at the seafloor. And then we have these kind of patches of rhodolites where you see this radial accumulation of, of, of rhodolites, which is also due to fish activity. The scale bars here in A, B, and C uh, is, is 40 centimeters each of the scale bar. And then that's the box core sample taken in one of these areas. So the scale bar in here is five centimeters. You very nicely see these living rhodolites and the sand, the matrix. So if you want, so the matrix of this thing is a large fornifer sand rich in Raginopora. Um, if you go further, further down in these bioplastic sand phases of these distally uh, steepened ramps, you see it's rippled throughout. A lot of reworking happening in there. You have these small scale ripples, you have mega ripples sitting in there. And if, if you look at the, at the sediment and the material in here, you see it's all broken 
broken uh, bioclast. So it's really reworked and redistributed material um, um, making up uh, these RAM deposits. Finally, just a short view about these hard grounds. Uh, you see these hard grounds are full of uh, fractures. There's almost no sediment covered it. Uh, so there's some, some crinoids or ophiurids are, are sitting here on, on these hard grounds. And then here in, the, in this middle part of the image, you see that um, the multi-beam imagery, you see that some uh, uh, submarine dunes migrate over this hard ground. And the, these submarine dunes are for sure, they are controlled by the South Equatorial Current. Here a cross section showing that these are relatively thin dunes in here and then uh, the exposure of the hard ground down here. So again, we also measured the ADCP, so the current uh, data in here in the water column. So here you see it's a little bit a uh, different uh, visualization than the data I showed you before. So here you see the, um, the east-west component of the current. Here you see the now south uh, component of the currents. Here the, the scale by is the velocity in, in uh, centimeters per uh, second. So the reddish colors are, it's almost a meter per second of current speed. And you see the current speed is highest here in the channel separating Sayadimala Bank and Nazareth Bank. And the current is also impinging on the platform interior where this sediment winnowing um, is taking place. So if you now go back into the geological evolution of, in the geological evolution of Saya de Malabeng, you see that uh, this system is not very old. It's, it has established at uh, some time. If, if we concentrate on, 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 this upper, on this upper slide in here, you see the recent seafloor, you see these elevated rims to the right and to the left. And then you have this kind of, of reflection uh, going uh, through the entire domain. And that's the drowning and conformity. Here, the platform drowned, and there was a turnover from this lower platform here. This is this unit two, where you can see some basinal deposits in here, in this, in this slide, and the same kind of basinal deposits in the lower slide. And if you look at these basinal deposits, you see that you have a progradation here from right to left on this side, and you have a progradation from, uh, from left to right to this side. So what, what Saya de Mala Bank looked like at, at this time was a huge atoll with a huge tens of kilometers wide and relatively deep lagoon here in the center. And this was infilled through time. And then there was this turn over here. This atoll geometry was lost. The platform did not grow up to sea level anymore. And we have this uh, bedded uh, succession uh, sitting in here. Here, the, the lower part, a little bit more detail, you see that within this atoll, there was even some, there were even some large pinnacle systems sitting in here. So a, a drastical turnover, a drastical turnover um, in, in the geological uh, past. And um, so what the, the question was, first of all, well, what, what delimits the, the system today? Why, why are there only mesophotic reefs sitting in here? in there is the high, too high nutrient input. And that's the reason why water samples were taken and CTD sampling uh, was performed. Here, this little map shows you the station. So if we had a north to south transect sitting in here, that's shown uh, up here in the upper slide. So where we see all these different water masses of the Central Indian Ocean impinging, impinging here. So the, the abbreviations are shown in here. So it's a really complex system to make it short. And there were also these measurements in the platform interior. These are these dots, these dots in here, and the the, the little uh, figures down here in the lower row of the of the slide show you the the different values. And the interesting values for us for the nutrients is the, the phosphate content, and you see that the phosphate content here in the shallow water and even in the intermediate water is low. So nutrients are not a limiting factor here of, of, uh, of uh, uh, platform uh, growth in the, in the uh, Saya de Mala Bank, and you don't have any upwelling. So that, that would be the leeward flank. You don't have any upwelling of nutrients around the platform. So what, what we did then, and uh, these are unpublished data, that's, that's in, we are just working on this, because the entire problem of this, we cannot really date this out. We cannot really date the drowning and conformity. We can just do some assumptions. So we know from several publications 
um, that the, the area is, is affected by a thermal subsidence and the subsidence curve is shown in here, published by Coffin already in, 90, in 92. And the, the hard ground is nowadays lying at the water depth more or less of uh, 300 meter and that places us in an age around from let's say around 3 million years to 5 million years. So this, this surface to uh, formed some three to five million years ago. And then we were looking what happened at this time. So we had this atoll with the reframe, we had the drowning and we had this horseshoe shaped atoll in the younger part of the succession. And what is very interesting that at this time we have the configuration, the present day configuration of the, of the Indonesian through flow. So that was, well, it is one of the of the important feeders of the of the South Equatorial currents. And what is also very interesting, um, the several papers showing that this time also coincide with the trade wind intensification. And probably this current pressure on the platform, together with a higher frequency sea level changes, really was a driver of this drowning of this area. But I think the message is you don't need nutrients to perform something like this. Um, several a, a similar view exists for, from, from the Maldives example I've shown before. There is a nice uh, paper just, uh, which just came out by, by Anna Ling from Miami together with uh, Peter Swart. They looked at the uh, nitrogen isotope data of one of, 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 two, uh, of two of these uh, of uh, these uh, wells we had drilled with IODP. Uh, here, the, the blue part here, these are uh, sequence boundaries, platform sequence boundaries. The left yellow part are drift sequence boundaries and the platform drowning. And I showed you before, it is a vertical stip in line. And the interesting thing is that the, that the uh, nitrogen isotopes don't show any sign of upwelling when the platform drowned. There are some short episodes of, of higher nutrient input into, into the shallow water a little bit later, so here around 10 million years and here in the younger part. But when the platform drowned, there was no, no proof of a higher nutrient content. So this, this makes me come to my conclusions. And where we think that, that the, the concepts of, of carbonate sequence stratigraphy should be amended with this current control, because this, these currents are really acting during carbonate platform growth, and they are really affecting the, the slope and, and the platform deposition. They control the phases, the accommodation. So what you do have, in fact, is a deep base level. Uh, linked to these uh, strong uh, currents, and they also affect the large scale geometry. And what we've seen today in the Sayalimala Bank that we have several phases uh, appearing together in here, which, which usually are part of a drowning sequence. So you have this kind of mesophotic reefs, and then uh, you have these hard grounds on top of it. And this is what you usually see in, in, in drowning, in the geological record of drown drowning sequences. And here in our case, these different phases are controlled by the currents. And what I also try to show you that nutrients are not necessarily a controlling factor for such a platform drowning. So such an effort is never done alone. So I have to thank to the scientific parties of several cruises we performed in here. Um, and uh, that's all from my side. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Christian. Thank you very much. That was absolutely superb, very enjoyable. Um, this is the bit where you can sigh with relief, not knowing if you've been talking to an empty room or uh, if somebody's been here. Yes, we were here and yes, we were listening. And um, everybody, as you can see from the chat, we have our questions are open. Please do type your questions and make sure you send them to everybody. Don't just send them to uh, SEDS online because uh, we won't all get to see them then. So send them to everyone. Um, please do mention where you're watching from and mention your name as well. That's quite useful. Uh, thanks very much. Christian, if I may, um, it's sort of uh, one of the advantages of pre presenting these uh, presenters is that I can get to ask, ask the first question. And um, those blocks in the Santan cha channel, um, the blocks off Malabank, Malabank, um, I presume there's effectively a lag deposit. So they, they represent many different 
blocks from many different times brought in by many different events. Is there any way you've actually, actually, am I, am I guessing there or is there any way you can date them or get an idea of what's bringing them in or why? Well, we, we know, I mean, I mean, um, probably these are during sea level of sense, a mass transport complex is developing in here. So it's, 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 um, there are better data from the Great Bahama Bank where these blocks are here, where, where, where you have this huge mass transport complex going further down into the basin, um, uh, where they can be traced very well. Here in, 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 in uh, Key Sol Bank, we don't have any data about the age or, no, no idea how old these are. But if you look at the water depth, so they are, I don't know, I mean, they are nowadays at the water depths of 250 meters, 200 meters. So probably there may be some mesophotic low stand reefs uh, in here and also some rework blocks from the, from the inner platform. So it's probably a kind of hybrid, hybrid uh, uh, source. What, what sort of sizes are we seeing there? It was, it was difficult to see that from the, what are the larger blocks? I mean, are they blocks of corals or are they sections of reef? Um, we, we don't know. Right. We, we don't know. Uh, so the, the scale is in here, so that's 500 meters. So these are tens of meters, large blocks or something like that. Okay, well, terrific, thank you. Um, right, we actually have our first question um, from, from the audience. So um, for, um, this is from Shada. Um, fascinating talk. I was just wondering if the current velocity and magnitude play a significant role in the lagoon infilling. That's Shada watching from India. Yeah, thanks. I mean, that, that, that's a very good question. I, I, I have to look at the data. So probably, um, yes, uh, what, what you would expect to see uh, in a, uh, under a current regime is that you have an asymmetry? Huh? That, that you have an asymmetry of the of the of the progradational complex, and that if you, if you look at this at this Hyalimala example, so so again the seismic line in here. Um, so you have the impression that the that the progradation from from the east to west is a little bit mid, bit more pronounced than the progradation uh, from uh, west to east, which is in line, in fact, with sitting in the trade wind belts. Huh? So yes. Um, the velocity, the velocity is affected. So the, the you have a higher velocity where on, on the leeward side, let's say, of, of the lagoonal part than on the on the windward side. Excellent, thank you. Um, re related to that, I, ha I actually had a question that sort of could act as a follow up to that. Is there is when you're looking at those hard grounds and you were showing that distally steepened ramp passing yeah. downslope into the hard grounds? And then you have that, I think, on the next slide, maybe the the, the fantastic velocity data, um, as well. Um, is there a critical velocity at which you switch to the hard grounds? Were you able to actually put your finger on a velocity where you switch? Ah, uh, now you're asking me. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good question. So I skipped I sk because that would have been. So I skipped. I skipped uh, one one story in here. Um, so this, this area here between uh, Saya de Mala Bank and Nathalite Bank, uh, that's an area where you have the, the biggest internal waves in our ocean produced nowadays. And these internal waves impinge on, on this uh, carbonate uh, ramp. And uh, that's a paper, it, it's still not published. That's the reason why I cannot show it here in the moment. It's still under, under review. I, I hope it's, it will be published soon. Um, um, and probably this, this distally steep run geometry is due to the interaction of these internal waves impinging on this system and the currents. So it's a, there are two factors uh, affecting this. Okay, so there's a little bit more going on than we see there. Yes. <laughs> okay. And please, please, people, do write your questions. Remember, you've got Christian here. He's here totally free and available to answer your questions right now so please do type your questions uh while we're waiting for some more questions i'm just going to take the um uh steal the floor as it were again and uh, just ask you christian uh, the, the um the maldives platform you were showing those terrific um dunes basically moving towards what were they moving towards they were moving towards the uh, east i guess um because i think you had north to the right of the image for that drowned edge of the Maldives. Yes. Um, any idea of the volumes of sediment, the amount of material that's being shed 
from those dunes. I mean, those dunes are obviously moving towards the edge of that system. Um, any ideas? Mm, so these dunes are moving platform. They are moving into the platform. Oh, it's moving inwards. Okay. They are moving inwards. So that's well, a that arrow is not showing the direction of movement. No. Oh no. No. Sorry. sorry. Oh, no, no, no. No. It's my, my oh. misinterpretation. No. 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 Oh, that's that's yeah. That's my mistake. Sorry. No, 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 they are moving. I mean, you see, I mean, I mean, I mean you, can, you can see that they are moving platform inwards because you, this is, if you look, for example, at this system here, yeah. you see the diffraction. Eh? You see the, how the, the thing comes in here and then it opens and you get this kind of, of diffracted dune system. And here you can, there, there's another uh, at all sitting in here. You can really see that they move around here. Yeah. No, no, they are, they are moving into the platform. So they're moving it right onto the system. Okay. Yeah, and it's a mixture of it's it's a mixture of pelagic uh, of pelagic uh, sand and and shallow water debris uh, debris coming coming from the from the nearby atolls. So it's what you call a peri platform ooze. Okay, terrific, excellent. That, that makes a little bit more sense to me. Brilliant. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Sorry uh, for that. <laughs> no problem. No problem. No problem. All right. People are sick of hearing me, so some more questions coming up. John Reimer, John Reimer, for obviously for watching from Amsterdam. Any global correlation of all events with changing carbonate platform mythologies and current speeds increasing? Yes, thanks, John. How are you? <laughs> um, yes. So um, um, what we can see, in, in fact, if you look at, at isolate, I mean. You can check this if, if you look at isolated carbon platforms in the in the neogene where, where we where we have the, the data we see that around this 10 to 30 million years ago the all the isolated platforms with exception with one exception which is great bahama bank they begin to shrink so because you had this these strong currents affecting affecting uh, the, the the slopes. The only exception is Great Bahama Bank. Why is it an exception? Because it's well situated in the trade wind bars, and you have this interaction of the Florida and, and Gulf Stream, Florida current and Gulf Stream, and this uh, this uh, this huge platform uh, shedding onto the leeward flank. But all the other platforms, if you look in the South China Sea, if you look at the Mascarene Plateau, if you look at the Maldives, if you look at the Queensland Plateau, so Northeast Australia, they are all shrinking in time. And probably uh, we, we think, and, and, and they are beginning to shrink when you see the drifts and the modes coming in. So yes, I think we published a paper on this some time ago with, with Bregor, so which we call the, uh, the Miocene onset of, of modern carbonate platforms. Yes, I think that there was current control in there. Thank you, Christian. Okay, um, now a question from David uh, from Germany. Um, hi, Christian. Thanks for your fantastic talk. I probably missed it, but could you explain once again why a less strong South Equatorial current should be linked to a drowning of the side of the Mala Black Bank? And that's David from Germany. Hi, David. Mm, no, that's so probably I, I miss I miss express. No, we think that the strengthening of the current was the was the uh, let, let me see i mean you are a better palatial rougher than than me so you know better the data than me so so if, if you look at, at this so that was one of the last slides in here so where, where we have the timeline here from zero to eight more or less so it's it's a relative timeline because as i told you we don't have data we hope um i have spoken with somebody who has data from an industrial well near, nearby maybe we have the possibility to get some cuttings in here and, and to to come up with with some age idea of the area uh, so so the turnover from this atoll to this uh, to this uh, horseshoe shaped uh, open atoll with this submersion i think it really correlates with the current strengthening not with the slowing but uh, but uh, current strengthening so the, I, I probably Miss mis expressed myself. Is, is, is it answering your question? Sorry? Is it answering your, your question, uh, David? David? Probably misunderstood. Thanks, Nathan. So, but, uh, <laughs> miss, I, 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 yeah, it was bo both of us probably. <laughs> that's why, why you have to do, to, you, that's why you need a personal meeting so you can have a chat and, and discuss about this. And oh, these webinars are fantastic, but okay. And we all look forward to those. 
nor from Hungary. But the advantage of this is we can have people from so many countries all here together. So next we're over in Hungary. Noor uh, is asking, uh, thank you for a great talk. I would like to ask about cyclicity and repetition in sediments. Is it equal in all places under the same conditions? And then wondering about the increase in grain size, the coarser downwards that you see. Did you care about or care or think about precipitation rates? Mm. Well, that's a that's a complex question. So, um, um, what we what we see in so I I I I, I, I now answer the question how how I understand it. Huh? So you, you have to re-ask if I if I if I don't answer what what, what you want to want to know. So we looked at these drift deposits, and yes, we see changes in grain sizes. We see changes in grain sizes, which we interpret as changing bottom current velocities, but. As we are dealing with carbonates, you have to be very careful. I mean, there's a very nice paper of, of John Reimer's group, which just came out, which shows the, the, all the problems with the size and the density of these carbonate part particles and how they react to current speed. So it's not as easy as in cyclastics, where you have a more or less linear relationship uh, between, between grain size and, and current speed. That's not the case in current. So yes, we see grain size uh, changes. So I, I don't, uh, I don't uh, the precipitation rates. So you mean the precipitation rates of of uh, of, compo of, of, uh, of 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 skeletal uh, elements, or can can you? Um, what, what what do you mean by precipitation rate? No, uh, you will give you a chance to type an answer if you want to actually clarify that. And I'll also invite any other questions. We have a couple of minutes left. No, we haven't got. Oh no! Uh, I mean, how many are? Ah, ah okay. right. Oh, oh no! Oh, how we? Uh, how many centimeters here? That's a good question. Huh? That's uh, if yeah. we would know that, that would be <laughs> fantastic. No, no, we we don't we know because we don't have the. Uh, because it's it's very difficult to date these sediments because you have so many so much reworking and so on. So we we don't know. I mean, the only data we do have, for example, that's the figure I showed you for the drift deposits in in the Santa Rain Channel. I just hop hop back again where you see the uh, the dated sequence boundaries in here. Uh, so 0.9 to 12.3 uh, uh, million of years and the thickness. I, I should go now to, into the into the well. So that's the only that's the time kind of time resolution we do have we, we cannot go down to the to the year scale brilliant thank you very much christine and uh, john's just posted for anybody who wants to look at their chat john has just posted that um uh paper that uh you were christine was just referring to nice one john um noah says thank you very much <laughs> okay well Christian, if there aren't any more questions, it looks like we've reached a natural uh, end. So I just want to, again, thank you for a truly fascinating and beautifully illustrated talk. Um, uh, I wish you luck through the rest of your quarantine, preparing for your forthcoming cruise. I'm really looking forward to reading and hearing all about that at a full, forthcoming conference, I hope, and in yes. person. That's what we all want. Um, speak but uh, thanks very much christian um everybody else i just draw your attention um and christian maybe next week to relieve the boredom a little bit um we have the carbonate forum is next tuesday um next tuesday registration is free we're hearing from a whole load of early career scientists um presenting their fantastic new science and uh, that's being run here on SEDS online you can register for it you do need to register for it separately you can do that through our web through our website it takes well, two minutes please do register please do come along uh, and that's being sponsored again thank you very much by the IAS uh, we'll leave it there so we won't actually be having a SEDS online webinar next week next week it's the carbonate forum is going to be our webinar instead so thank you very much again Christian thank you very much Everybody else, with that, I'll wrap up for this week. Thanks for Thank organizing you. that.